Thank you, Chairman Durbin, Ranking Member Grassley, and members of the committee for the opportunity to speak today for so many who are depending on you not only to speak, but to legislate equal treatment under the law for them. Like all of you, I have multiple identities. I am a person of faith, an African-American woman, the leader of a faith institution, and a mother. I am also one of hundreds of thousands of members of PFLAG and am honored to serve as a member of the National Board of Directors. But of all of my identities, the most important will always be a mother. My husband and I have two adult children. They couldn't be more different, and that has always been true. They have made their own paths, and we are proud of them both. At 14, our older child, Brian, came out to us first as gay and later as a trans non-binary person. Brian never had any doubt that they would be loved and accepted for who they are because that is the message they always receive from my husband and me and from the faith community of the United Church of Christ. As an extrovert, Brian wanted to be fully out to everyone. But at the time, my husband and I said no, not because we were ashamed, but because we were afraid for Brian's safety. Being black and gay in a predominantly white community in school, you bet we were afraid. But as a child then, Brian had to live a conflictual reality, loved and accepted at home and church, but not fully affirmed or protected in other places. Without the Equality Act, the law does not fully protect me as a woman, and it does not protect my trans non-binary child. As a parent, I want the best for both of my children. I want Brian to have the same protections and rights as my other child, Michael. While Brian never had to worry about acceptance by their family or faith community, their life is still like that of many LGBTQ plus people. Choices are framed or limited by external forces. Brian can choose, Michael can choose to live wherever he pleases, but Brian makes those choices based on where they feel safe and local laws protect them. We should all be able to agree on this one thing. The law should treat all our children, God's children equally. All of our children deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. Every single one of us would go to the mat for our children. None, none of us wants them to be turned away or discriminated against for any reason. Now, I understand that we all come at this question from different places. And maybe this seems so simple to me because I consider the merits of the Equality Act as an African-American woman who knows all too well the impact and legacy of racial discrimination. And I also know how religion and faith were used to justify slavery, but that was wrong. And most faith communities today admit that. I think we can learn from that history. No one should be denied rights and services because of who they are or who they love. Any kind of discrimination is inconsistent with the God of love that I know and trust. Many denominations, including my own United Church of Christ, already welcomes LGBTQI persons fully into our faith communities and value their leadership as gifted and cherished children of God. We fully support the Equality Act. While that matters to me, what matters most will always be my children. And I am here as Brian's mother primarily and for other mothers, and yes, as a person of faith. Faith is always very personal. What I believe matters. It matters that I believe that God is love. It matters that I believe in the biblical verse, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But what really matters for Brian, for me as a woman, is the law. The Equality Act is a way for this country to make that tenet of my faith, known as the biblical golden rule, the law of the land. And for me, it really is that simple. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Guffey. Uh, Ms. Shrub